You can go to sleep, sweetie. I'm here. You're safe. I've got you. Paracetamol is coming. We're just gonna deal with slow bloody doctors, okay? You need to have some rest, my love. But honestly, I can't... I can no longer tell whether this is seizure activity or just feeling unwell. Whether the gruntiness is seizure or just phlegmy throat. Oh, she's trying to relax and go to sleep and her little body won't let her. Oh, poor girl. So this is vent from her tummy, basically pulling out the stomach acid. And now I'm going to start giving her some medicines very, very slowly and carefully. Hi. Hi. So that was literally two meals of water I just put in. Hey! Did you sleep well? Yeah? Nice long sleeps. Let's see. Shall we have some? What do we start with? Let's start with the back look then. Yeah, we're gonna give it super duper 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 slow. A super duper 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 slow. Yes, we are. Hello, that's a nice smile. I like that smile. So the probe on her foot is picking up less signal. There we are, there we're back. Good girl. Shall we see what your temperature is doing this morning? Can I get a little space here? Yeah, thank you. Hello, you. Hello. There we are. There's the temper dot. I am positive, I, I have confidence that we have turned the corner, we're out of the worst of it, and we've managed to keep her from spiraling into really bad seizures. She is going through quite a lot of spasms and tenseness, but that might very well be because she hasn't had any baclofen the muscle relaxant for several days and even when she has had it she's not kept it down and now I'm giving her baclofen where did the tube go there it is and I'm giving it super slow and it is 10 o'clock in the morning she had a reasonably good night's sleep it's about 10 o'clock last night that I was able to give her these medicines straight into her tummy and she kept them down and then she slept for a good while and then she woke up around three and was very very grumpy and then she slept again and then she was screaming a bit around seven and then she slept again and yeah as I say now it's 10 o'clock 
and she's starting to wake up she's starting to move she's definitely grinding her teeth she's not feeling all that good but hopefully she'll be able to tolerate having these medicines drip fed very 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 slowly a lot of stuff happened yesterday as it does and I'm I'm amused by how how proactive and effective the night team is <laughs> compared to the day team I'm like what is it the day team are doing because honestly overnight it should make sense to kind of go all right well let's keep our patients sleeping and the night team are like right let's do this let's do that let's fix let's sort can, can they just swap the teams around or something so we had just as she was starting to settle last night we had an x-ray <laughs> 10 o'clock at night we had a bloody x-ray yes she's starting to relax she's starting to settle let's lay her down on her back on a hard board and have big bright lights in the room and um and take x-rays had uh, i had the usual conversation with the x-ray technician I was like, okay, so you'll leave her on her back, we'll leave her uh, lying like that, and then we'll all leave the room and take an x-ray. And I'm like, no, no, we won't. <laughs> no, nobody is leaving the room. Well, everybody but one person is leaving the room if she's going to be lying on her back. Somebody is here with the suction and keeping an eye like a hawk on her. Um, so basically went, I can absolutely promise you there is no chance of me being pregnant. I will wear the lead apron, but I'm in here. We are not leaving her lying on her back by herself. Basically, Eileen lying on her back triggers spasms in her. And also she, as we know, she vomits and she's a massive aspiration risk. So it is downright dangerous to leave her lying on her back unattended, even for two seconds. So I did get that. And uh, I, did, I did say, can we just recognize the superhuman strength here? Where I was wearing a lead apron and lifting Eileen up and positioning her. Uh, as, as you do, as you do, I am mother, hear me roar. Um, but they wanted to take an x-ray of her stomach to make sure that there are no blockages that are causing her to vomit. Um, and I'm like, she, her, gut, her gut shuts down. When she's, un when she's unwell, her gut will just shut down and nothing will be digested, nothing will go through that way it will all just come up because her body will not process it. But okay, so we we have done an x-ray to find out that there are no blockages. Uh, the night team also started her on antibiotics. And we have done a lot of blood tests and culture testing and all of that kind of stuff on her. And there have been no infection markers in her blood, but her temperature would not come down even with paracetamol so when she was brought in it is sunday today she was brought in friday afternoon she had 37.5 which is borderline it's not massive fever but it's borderline and then it stayed there and then it stayed there and then it went up uh, so it went up to 38.2 and then after several hours uh, and more paracetamol it crept back down to 37.5 so I'm just checking where we're at now. She doesn't feel all that hot to me. I'm expecting it to not be too bad. But let's have a look. What does my temper dot say? 37.5. Huh. 37.5. Okay, so we're staying at 37.5. Are we yelling? Can you see her smile from there? I'm getting a little smile. And her stomach is, she's not very happy with her stomach right now. She's grinding her teeth, but hopefully it won't be too bad. And maybe all we'll get is a bit of gagging, but not bringing anything up. Mm. We also had the ICU team here yesterday evening. That's intensive care. Because if we can't control the seizures, then the option is to knock her out to sedate her and then she needs to be intubated and they come down every time Eileen's in hospital with this they come down and talk to us 
and so far touch wood we've not had to do it so we were talking about her epilepsy care plan and about the fact that it is a template care plan and we are we are in the process of trying to change it and change her medication and what would be the next step and she was having she was having episodes yesterday but even i was going i'm not entirely sure what this is like i don't i don't i don't know it doesn't feel quite that bad <laughs> if that makes any sense so before she went into hospital so on friday morning she was definitely clustering she was definitely clustering. She was at her dad's and he gave her buccal midazolam and that calmed her down for a bit. And then in the afternoon, it was very clear to him that he needed to bring her in. But yeah, yesterday I basically had, she would go tense and her pulse would rise to 150 and she would make her grunty breathing noises. And then the pulse would go down and her oxygen sats would dip and then the pulse would go up again, as would her oxygen saturation, so you know, too high pulse, but at least adequately breathing. And then we just kept having that, zoom, 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 and that didn't stop. And that we do see when she's clustering, but I didn't feel the electrical current running through her body that I usually feel when she's in cluster seizures. And she wasn't gagging and retching after each and every one, which is also something we see, which is clustering, right? So I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I just, I... It's not right, but it's not as bad as it could be. So what the hell do we do? And we did give her a dose of lorazepam. And she slept for 20 minutes and then she was straight back into it. And I was like, hmm, now what? Because, you know, at this point we are talking quite extreme interventions. Uh, so this is when we are talking to ICU and that the next step would be a drug called peraldehyde, which is very efficient. And if we can keep it in, ELA will respond to it. But it's given rectally and uh, more often than not, what it does do is make her have a big bowel movement and just push all the medicine out. And then we also have the option of Keppra loading, so to give her a high dose of, uh, of Keppra or Levetiracetam. And then the next step after that is Phenobarb. And when she is bad in a spiral of cluster seizures, Phenobarb is the one she responds to. But Phenobarb is strong stuff. It is really, really strong stuff. And this is when ICU want to intubate her. And I'm like, you know, she's had phenobarb twice before and not needed to be intubated. Oh, but now if we're doing phenobarb, we're intubating her first. I'm like, but, 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 but we've not had to before. Oh, but I want to keep her safe. Okay, I get that. I respect that. I appreciate that with all of my heart. I want to keep her safe as well. But we've not needed to before. So why are we this extreme with it this time? Yeah, so I, I was kind of really hoping we wouldn't need to go down the route of phenobarb. I was also rather hoping we wouldn't need to go down the route of peraldehyde because it stinks. And not just because it makes her open a bowel. The medicine is, it, it reeks. And I was like, I've been venting all of this stomach acid out of her st stomach now for hours. And we've given omeprazole, which is a good anti-acid medicine that helps calm the stomach down. And... So that was given IV. Uh, we are giving Ondansetron, which is an anti-emetic, that is a medicine that helps you stop vomiting, and that's also gone IV. I'm like, because I don't know what this is, because I don't know if it's seizures or if it's spasms. She hasn't had her muscle relaxant for several days. We know that when she's not too deep into the seizures, she responds really well to an anti-electric drug called Clobazam, but that has to be given through the Mickey button. There is no IV option for it. Like, I think I'm gonna try. And so last night I gave her those two through her Mickey button, and I mean five milliliters of Clobazam I gave over 20 minutes. That's how slow I was pushing that in. And it worked. 
And even now, right, she's tense now, she's a bit shivery, but her pulse is only 118, not 150. And she has had beautiful deep sleep overnight. She has kept her oxygen saturation up overnight. So yeah, we've not needed to go down that really intense route of very, very strong medicines. So right now I'm giving Baclofen. And once I've done that, I'm also gonna give her Clobazam. And I'm going to give her Silenar, which is the medicine that helps control how much she dribbles. Yeah, I am. I am. That is my plan. Do you agree with this plan, darling? Do you? Yeah? Hello. She's very alert. She's very responsive. She's not entirely happy. But she does smile at me. So, yeah, I, I am... I am cautiously optimistic that we have turned the corner and we're now basically on the home stretch of letting her body rest, then starting fluids through her stomach, then getting onto feeds, then getting home. And she's gonna need some time for all of this. But we're getting there. There is no doubt that she needed to come in. She needed to have IV fluids and IV medicines, she needed that break, she needed the good stuff that's in the dr drug storage here that we don't have access to at home, she needed to be more closely monitored, she needed the oxygen, all of that good stuff, but yeah, I'm kind of hoping that we are now heading in the right direction. And thanks to her having the IV drip, we now have very heavy wet pads, so she is hydrated now and urine is going as it should do and we're, we're reducing the risk of urine infection. Yeah, yeah, things are happening. They are, they are my love. 